2,000 years ago, God ordained women to preach. 2,000 years ago, God ended age discrimination. And 2,000 years ago, God abolished slavery. In a mighty wind and flames of fire, a great cacophony of different languages, God demolished the categories by which we rank the worth of human beings. This is the word of the Lord. That's the meaning of this Pentecost story. People of all languages, ethnicities from around the world were just going about their daily business when suddenly they were able to hear and understand God speaking to them. Now, Peter saw this for what it was. It was God giving the Holy Spirit to create a new community of diversity and equality. So in that moment, it's understood that what God has done is anoint men and women to speak God's word. The spirit falls on young people and old people alike. God frees slaves to speak the truth of God's justice. And God says to live together in peace, to be saved, everyone's voice must be heard. That's what it means to prophesy. It's to preach or to speak up. It's not about telling of the future. It means to speak about what God is doing in the world, to tell our truth. And God says we especially need to hear the voices of people who have been shut down, shut up, and shut out. Women, people who are too old or too young, those marginalized and oppressed. So what happened? If God ordained women to preach 2,000 years ago, why didn't that happen? For a time, women were leaders of churches, and then women were shut out of leadership. 2,000 years ago, after the day of Pentecost, I was told by executive presbyters not to bother applying to congregation in certain regions of the country because they would never hire a female pastor. And it has been hard sometimes in these last 29 years. Yet God has reminded me again and again that she needs the voices of women to preach. For still women are second-class citizens and Congress is 73% men, the ones making decisions about women. God is still thought of as a man, he. In scripture, God is a rock, a mother eagle, a woman giving birth, a nursing mother nursing her child. Yet these images shock us. Women have nearly 2000 years to make up for all the time that we were silenced. And if God empowered old people and young people to see visions and dream dreams for the betterment of humanity, why doesn't there seem to be a right age in the workplace? At a certain age, we even become age protected so that you can't just fire people because they get too old. And what about caring for our children and hearing their voices? I'm sure it's like it was for you as it has been for me when I started out in ministry and had my first church people said, oh, she lacks experience. Even though I remembered everything from seminary, my Greek and my Hebrew, people did not think I had what it took to truly be the competent person that I would be. And so I waited and I thought, when I get some gray hair, then people will really know that I have come of age and have that experience and be able to really be the pastor that God has called me to be. But then we start to cover up the gray, right? Because we get too old or thought of as just too old to be culturally relevant anymore. And so I hide my gray so I don't look so old. I hope you don't see it too much today. 
And if God abolished slavery 2000 years ago, if the Holy Spirit truly empowered enslaved people to be free, oppressed and marginalized people to have status in the world, why was our nation built on slavery and cruelty still spilling into our streets? Know this, this Pentecost, the holy chaos of smashing slave chains and patriarchy is God's vision for the world. From the prophet Joel 900 years before Jesus to today, God's vision for humanity has always been one of freedom and equality and justice. That's the first thing. That has always been God's vision. God is always working for that. And this is the second thing to know. Humanity is very, very good at resisting God. Even those who wrote the Bible. Yes. Even those who wrote our Bible resisted God's vision for humanity. By the time the latest books of the Bible were written, patriarchy and slavery were all being promoted again, at least by some in the church. So we have Jesus proclaiming that women are to be freed and equal. And we have Paul calling women to be pastors of churches, Lydia and Persephone and Prisca and Julia. And yet, by the time the book of Titus is written, he writes, I permit no woman to teach or have authority over a man. She is to keep silent. That's 1 Timothy 2.11. Not so long after Jesus resurrect, was resurrected from the dead, already women are to be silent. And in the book of Titus, tell slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give satisfaction in every respect. They are not to talk back. Sometimes the word of God is distorted, even in scripture. In those few passages, women are silenced and people are put back in change. We have to remember that not all scripture is the word of God. Some is a horrible distortion of God's word. So how do we know God's word? And the gospel of John, Jesus is the word of God the logos of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and all things came into being through the word. And without the word, not one thing came into being. For what had come into being in the word was life. And the life was the light of all people and the light shines in the darkest, the deepest shadows and they have not overcome it. Empire and patriarchy will always try to quench the word and douse the spirit, but the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. God's spirit still blows strong in our world. The winds of Pentecost, that promise is among us. The spirit is still blowing down our caste structures and God's community of love and diversity and inclusion is our reality. God will continue to blow through us until that community of women and men, the equality, no slavery, no oppression, no discrimination. That is God's intention for our being together. So let's claim some of these promises of Pentecost. It is a great sadness that on the streets where Pentecost happened, right there in Jerusalem, that bombs have fallen this past week and that Israelis and Palestinians have sought to destroy each other rather than come together 
as God has intended. The promise of Pentecost is that we must hear and understand the voices of long occupied Palestinians. We have to know their experiences and hear what they have to say about settlements, about being enslaved, being shut out. For in this is the hope for peace. And we must hear and understand the voices of both Arab and Jew Jewish Israelis. We must hear and understand the fear. We must hear and understand the calls for justice. We must hear and understand how God may be working even behind the scenes to bring about peace. For this is the promise of Pentecost. Pentecost is blowing among us for next weekend. People will gather from all over the nation of every ethnicity and language to stand in solidarity with those who speak against hate of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Our own high school student, Carla Stefan, will be one of the young voices that is raised to prophesy God's will for a new humanity free of hate and discrimination and violence towards anyone. This is Pentecost. Last Wednesday, Viola Fletcher, a 107 year old black woman testified before Congress. She is the survivor of a Tulsa race massacre of 1921. 100 years ago, the sheriff of Tulsa deputized 500 white men to kill black people. Planes went over the neighborhood and dropped bombs of turpentine to blow down and burn down houses and businesses of black people. They decimated the prosperous black part of the city. And 100 years later, members of Congress heard Mrs. Fletcher prophesy about reparations for the devastation done to the black people in Tulsa. She is speaking Pentecostal words of salvation for black and white Oklahomans and black and white people in our United States, people of every ethnicity, every language, old and young, male and female, slave are free. Claim the day of Pentecost. Play, claim this day wherever you can, whenever you can. Prophesy with women. Prophesy with the young and the old. Prophesy with the hated and the oppressed and let your words and actions be the Pentecost people that God has ordained each one of us to be. Claim the Pentecost promise. True life for all people. God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. May Pentecost be so.